Israeli airstrikes killed at least three more people, including a pregnant Palestinian woman and her 18-month-old child. The Prime Minister of Israel, His Excellency Benjamin Netanyahu. A group of 58 U.S. Senators, Republicans and Democrats, are working to implement a law that would make it a felony for Americans to invoke their First Amendment right against Israel. I want to thank you, Democrats and Republicans, for your common support for Israel, year after year, decade after decade. The Israel Anti-Boycott Act would make it a felony for U.S. citizens to support boycotts of Israel and Israeli settlements. Boycott, divest from, and sanction the state of Israel. The BDS movement is a call from Palestinian civil society to impose non-violent measures to get Israel to comply with its obligations under international law and end its denial of Palestinian rights. The objectives of the BDS movement are one, the liberation and the end of this occupation. Number two, the return of refugees to their homes and to their livelihoods. Number three is the end of apartheid and segregation and discrimination against Palestinians inside Israel and everywhere else. Israel, the one and only Jewish state. This legislation is part of a broad Zionist campaign to undermine growing support for BDS, often conflating the BDS movement with anti-Semitism. It targets those who are critical of the Jewish state's policies and who support boycott and divestment campaigns. Punishable by at least a $250,000 fine with a maximum penalty of a fine of $1 million. I'm proud to say in my last year as governor, it was my great privilege to sign one of the strongest anti-BDS laws in America. As of the end of 2018, 26 states have enacted laws punishing businesses that choose to boycott Israel. In 2017, one city in Texas even required businesses to certify that they would not boycott Israel before receiving hurricane aid. Most recently, a speech pathologist who has worked in the Austin School District for nine years was fired because she refused to sign a document pledging that she would not participate in a boycott of Israel. It's baffling that they can throw this down our throats, you know, and decide to protect another country's economy versus protect our constitutional rights. It sounds like the language of McCarthyism. Are you now or have you ever been mm -hmm. a supporter of the Communist Party? Now it's are you now, have you ever been, and will you ever be in the future a supporter of nonviolent boycotts against Israeli violations of international law? That's an outrage. Not only is this legislation outrageous, it is in direct conflict with our constitutional right. I know that America stands with Israel. I know that you stand with Israel. Even when virtually the entire world condemns Israeli aggression and declares settlements illegal, the U.S. Congress, across party and ideological lines, finds virtually complete harmony in uniting against the world consensus and in defense of the Israeli government. No matter on which side of the aisle you sit, you stand with Israel. The American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, known as APAC, reportedly helped craft the bill and has made its passage one of the group's top lobbying priorities. You know, the, the way that it was presented uh, in the lobbying effort didn't talk about the criminal penalties that were associated with violating the statute. APAC is focused exclusively on strengthening the U.S.-Israel relationship. We work with both parties. We influence American policy. The bill has received backing from many prominent senators on both sides of the aisle. Democrats backing the bill include Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, Ron Wyden of Oregon, Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, and Maria Cantwell of Washington. Republican backers include Ted Cruz of Texas, Ben Sass of Nebraska, Marco Rubio of Florida. Most of these senators are heavily funded by pro-Israel PACs and private donors. The uniform that I wore in the military, unfortunately, was not an Israeli uniform. It was an American uniform, although my wife was in the IDF. An identical measure was introduced in the House, amassing 292 co-sponsors, 76 Democrats and 216 Republicans. Israel is grateful to you, the American Congress, for your support for supporting us in so many ways, especially in generous military assistance. That generous military assistance Netanyahu is referring to is $38 billion over 10 years. Over $10 million a day, more than $7,000 a minute. Basically, U.S. taxpayers 
give $23,000 for every Jewish-Israeli family of four. That's a lot of money when you consider the many priorities we have here at home and abroad. In fact, more than one half of our entire global foreign military financing goes to Israel, goes to Israel, goes to Israel. Thank you, America. Thank you for everything you've done for Israel.